welcome to Abstract Boss. My name is Ashley and today I will be walking you through how I make my abstract agate style coasters. I will be answering questions such as how I finish the back and how I make them in general. I will do a full walkthrough, so stay tuned. All right. I got so super excited because my pigments were already mixed into my cups and I knew that I was running on a timeline. So I started pouring and then I realized I needed to level my mold. Oh, normally it makes leveling a lot harder, but with this piece, I put my mold on top of a round piece of wood and it was fairly easy to level out after that. Um, honestly, it's a really good thing that I didn't pour too much because then my art would have moved all around and I have done that before and then I ended up not liking the art that came from it. Okay, back to the coasters. Honestly, I had no idea what I really wanted to do with these coasters. I just knew that I needed to use all the colors in some way. So I did try to have some colors that would match really well together whenever I was showing you guys how to mix but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with them. And so I just decided to make coasters. And I thought the best way to do that would just to go ahead and start doing a puddle pour. I started with the dark aquamarine that I had from Counter Culture DIY. I had the most of this color, so I figured this would be a really good base and a good way to start. After that, I decided to take the transparent aquamarine and I didn't really want the transparency of that particular color to alter the way that anything else looked further along in my project. If you're not sure how to mix any of the particular pigments into your resin, or if you just wanna see how I mixed all these colors, be sure to check out my video from last week here. After puddle pouring my blues and white, I decided to do a couple lines with the magenta looking color and the coral looking color. The magenta came from the oil paint that I mixed and the coral color came from Patty's pigments and May Spring mixed together. The magenta color turned out to be a little too transparent for my liking. So because of this, I added white to follow along the lines of that magenta color just to kind of help fill in that opaqueness. Now, the majority of my colors are all poured into my coaster molds. Before I take my heat gun and move my resin colors around, I circle on top of the resin with that heat gun and that allows my resin to stay a little bit more fluid. I don't, I just kind of do it as a way to heat the resin back up and to keep it nice and flowy. <laughs> this is uh, a lot harder to do though with coaster molds because as soon as you bring a heat gun onto it, you have to worry about whether or not you are going to heat the mold up too much and you have to worry about blending the colors together too much. So the best way to prevent either one of these issues from occurring is just to make sure you're not moving the colors with a heat gun more than necessary. You can always take popsicle sticks or use a straw or add resi blast, etc. There are always more things to do than just use a heat gun on your resin. And if really you're a beginner and you don't know what to do, I've been pulling a lot of tutorials back into my channel lately. So make sure you click that bell and follow along after you subscribe. So that way you don't miss any of my how to's that I put out. Now I do have a whole playlist that I'll put up right here on how to's and that'll show you quite a bit of things to get you started. So that way you know a couple techniques that you, you can use with resin. But I do have a lot coming up, so either way, you're gonna be just fine. Another way to help you up your game though is to join in on the weekly challenges that I will be hosting. So be sure to check out all that information in the link below. You'll have the opportunity to win a super awesome award and check out other artists' material and have other artists help you when you're stuck. It's really an amazing community that I want to build and it's all of artists, beginners, intermediate, advanced, it doesn't matter. And yes, it is a competition, but we're all uplifting one another and everyone has a chance to win. So I think it's really cool. After you're done with moving the resin around with your heat gun, this is a prime time to go ahead and add what little bits of resin colors you have left into any areas that seem too muddy or overwhelming with just one color. This way you can add a little bit more vibrancy and contrast into your piece. If you notice, I use my popsicle stick to lay these colors inside of it instead of just pouring it straight on it. 
This allows me to control how the color lays instead of just blobs. <laughs> now I get to add my texture now that I'm done moving it around with the heat gun. I use crushed vase filler that I get from Michaels over in the wedding and floral sections. I've found it in both areas. I've used texture within my coasters before, but didn't have enough resin inside the mold to cover that texture. So there's a couple things that you need to know when you're utilizing these particular types of um, crushed glass or anything that's sharp within your resin. One, you need to make sure that you have enough resin, obviously, or you will feel that texture when it's all cured. And no one really wants to set their glass on top of a coaster that could possibly crack it on the bottom. And two, I personally really like to have clear resin to pour on top um, or even pour right in the middle before I add my texture. And this will give me more sense of depth after it all cures because I'll be able to see down into my coaster and I think it's super cool. I didn't actually utilize any clear resin for this one because I was hoping that the bottoms would turn out cooler than the tops. But once everything cured, I loved them both and I couldn't decide so I just decided to keep the tops and then put the rubber feet on the bottom so that way they could see both sides. Now that the coasters are all cured, I took them out of the mold and they came out so easily. It's been about 20 hours since I had casted them and what I love about the Lick Ranch Creations mold is it really seems to release anything that I put inside of it sooner than other molds. So for example, I have casted uh, coasters within just the generic ones that I get from Amazon and it takes the full 24 hours or longer to be able to take them out of there. But with the LaCranche Creations, I can take them out slightly sooner and that frees me up to be able to do more projects and that makes a really big difference when it comes to being able to get more things out and listed on Etsy. Now, whenever you're pouring inside a mold, the resin will end up giving a lip along the edges and you're just gonna have to take an X-Acto knife or some type of razor or straight edge, like the one that you see here, and you're just gonna have to shave all of that down. Now, if you are taking a razor or blade or anything sharp to resin, it is going to scratch it, so you wanna be super, super careful and make sure that you're only taking it to the areas that you're going to cover with something else. For example, here, I'm gonna cover it with alcohol ink. Now, I utilized the KS resin inside of this and it was still a little tacky on the bottom after 20 hours. So I made sure to be extra careful and to hold it along the edge here. Now time for the alcohol ink. I utilized the metallic alcohol inks from Pinata Ink these are the different ones that I have, and I like to hold them up against my coasters to determine which ones or which one will look the best. In this case, it was hard to decide between the silver and the copper, but I settled for the copper in the end. I just take a normal, really small paintbrush, and I take the copper alcohol ink, and I put it in a separate cup, and I utilize that brush to brush it along the edges very carefully. I don't wanna get it on the bottom or the top, but if you do, you can use alcohol to wipe it up. But like I mentioned, these coasters are still a little tacky at this point. And so I don't want any of the alcohol to get on top of bottom because I don't wanna have to scrub at it to get that metallic off. Any of the metallic alcohol inks are a little bit harder to remove from whatever surface that you're applying it to. Now, once you're done, you can just wash that paintbrush with 91% alcohol and then that brush is good to use again. Now I've been asked multiple times what I use to finish the bottoms of my coasters and it's never one thing for me. I like to use whatever I think is going to suit that particular coaster. So for these, I use rubber feet because I want to be able to see the top and the bottom of the coasters. But for my ceramic tiles, I use cork. For any that I decide to paint, um, if you follow any of my stories and you've seen some of the glitter ones that I did, the glitter layer coasters, they were very transparent. And so I either left them with rubber feet or I went ahead and painted them white and then put cork on the bottom of them. But I also have used um, the paper-like foam board that you get from like the kids crafting section. I've also utilized that as well. So cork, rubber feet, and the foam board. 
I do like to always finish my coasters though. So this way uh, your table is protected whenever you buy my art. I don't want my resin to scratch up your table, but I also don't want your table to ruin the art that you just purchased either. And that's it everyone, those are the coasters. I consider them an abstract agate style because they are in an agate mold, but with my crazy abstract artwork. <laughs> and I absolutely love them. And I think that the magenta really contrasted with the teal and the blues and it looks amazing. Um, I already listed them on my Etsy. So if you go to purchase them and they're gone, that's because I had a lot of people interested in them on Instagram. So make sure you are following my Instagram to have first pick of everything that is being posted on my Etsy shop. Or you could just make sure to favorite my shop on Etsy so you don't miss out whenever I post new products. So tell me, I'd love to know, what are your favorite things to cast with resin? And are there any projects you would like to see more of on my channel? I'm doing some more research for some upcoming videos that I have and would love to know your input. Again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my competition starting in June by clicking on the Facebook group below, and I'll see you next time.